Before we get started with the word, we're gonna, you can go ahead and put up there John chapter 4. We're going to read verses 21 through 23 in a moment. I've already shouted out my voice, amen. But uh, Wednesday night, we kind of started on some of this, and I thought that I was going to be able to, or not be able to, but I thought I was going to wait till Wednesday, and I had another message. And I felt like the Lord, and I realized while I was worshiping, I did this wrong right here. So I need to uh, change change that but I, I, I had a whole nother message and uh and the lord yesterday started to put on my heart that i needed to come back to this spot and that it's not going to be exactly the same way that it was on wednesday but that the lord wants us to spend a little bit of time here amen and so while she's probably got john chapter four loaded up but before we do that, I just wanted you to kind of see this little diagram that I drew up here and kind of like talk to you about it a little bit so that you understand where I'm coming from, right? So I'm trying to describe to you, you got to understand that you're, there's three parts to your humanity, right? God is, God is three in one, amen? You're not, you're not a trinity, but there's, there's three elements to your humanity. And the elements of your humanity is that you have a spirit, and so way here on the inside, I put spirit and then I put yours and I put holy because the Holy Spirit, if you're saved, lives on the inside of your spirit. OK, we'll talk about that in a moment. But then I will actually can you load up first uh, Corinthians chapter two, verse 14 for me? We'll go to John chapter four after. So I actually load up first Corinthians two and 14 and you can actually put that up on the on the screen. <laughs> so the most inner part of your being is your spirit man. I want to just say a little something about the spirit just for a second, that the spirit in you is what makes you different than other, any other creation. The spirit that God gave you makes you different than any other creation. The Bible says that whenever he breathed into Adam, he made him a living soul. But the Bible also uses the word soul to reference animals. But animals don't have a spirit. Yes, they have spirit in the sense that they're alive. Okay. Uh, but they don't have a spirit of God consciousness. The spirit that's in man is what makes him different than any other creation. That he actually has the ability to become God conscious. But not every human being has allowed himself to become God conscious because it requires faith in Christ and the plan of God in order for that to come alive on the inside. Amen. So I just wanted you to know that your innermost part of you and, and also the spirit, your spirit, you are a spirit. And I know I said that Wednesday night, but let me say it again. God is spirit. You are spirit. Angels are spirit. Demons are spirit. You're a spirit. The spirit part of you is not only the God consciousness part of you, but the spirit part of you is also the eternal aspect of you. Your spirit is going to live for eternity. And I need you to understand that. Your spirit is going to exist from the point of your conception moving forward. And I feel like the Lord wants me to say a little bit of something about that in a moment. But from the point of your conception moving forward, your spirit now is an eternal being. And so you are going to dwell in an eternity somewhere. Amen. And if you're saved this morning, praise God. If you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you're going to dwell in the presence of the Most High God for an eternity. So I want you to know that spirits don't die. No, there's death, there's a second death, but it's not because you implode and you explode. No, the second death is to live in eternity separate from the presence of God. Right. So people that don't know Jesus will live in an eternity. They will still exist, but they will live in an eternity separate from the presence of God in a place known as hell that Jesus preached on hell. He said that the place of hell is where the fire isn't quenched, the worm doesn't die, and that there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen? But listen, we don't have to go to hell, praise God, because there is a fountain. Yeah. And hallelujah. Yeah. There is a fountain. Yeah. And it flow, and there's and there and it flows from how the song goes. How hope, healing, refreshing yes. flows yes. from Emmanuel's veins, yes. and it and it washes all your sins away. Yes. Yes. Amen. And and praise God for that, right? So that's your spirit, and and that's the place where God wants you to come alive, right there. That's the place where you can come alive to God, and it's like a treasure. It's shaped kind of like a pearl. 
I wasn't thinking about that when I drove it. Shaped kind of like pearly was circled in white. Wasn't even thinking about that. But look, a pearl of great price. <laughs> it's a treasure to be able to understand that you can have the life of God on the inside of you. And that is to be protected at all costs. The tre I mean, that's if you believe this is even real. Right. I mean, if you don't believe this is even real, you're probably going to get tired of it before it's over. With. <laughs> There's no real reason to even listen to something like this. You want video. You might even want to find some other video to watch if you don't believe this is real. But if you believe this is real, what I'm talking to you about this morning is important. Yes. It's very important. All right. And so here is your spirit. And it's the place where you are allowed to, where you can become awakened to the things of God and you become God conscious. And also, according to the scripture right here, what does it say? It says that, go to 1 Corinthians 6 and 17. And while we're on the spirit, he that is joined into the Lord is one spirit. Right? We know we've been talking about that scripture a lot. But I want you to know that when you got saved, the Holy Spirit came to live on the inside of your spirit. And the word of God says that your spirit becomes one with his spirit. Amen? All right. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 13. And what I want you to see, because we're about to talk about the body here in a moment, all right? See what it says right here? It says, meats for the belly, belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Now, I want you to go to the next verse real quick, verse 14, because I want to explain that to you. God has both raised up the Lord. Jesus was resurrected from the dead. Amen. And he will also raise us up by his own power. Now, go back to the previous verse. So that's what it's talking about. Meats for the belly. The belly for meats, but God will destroy both of them. See, this body right here, see, that's, that's what it's talking about. The belly it is used for meats, food. The stomach is used for food. But this being right here that we have known ever since we've known about ourselves is going to be destroyed. And just as the Lord rose up, just as God the Father rose up by the Spirit, the Lord, he will also raise up our mortal body. So this body that we know that has been functioning for these earthly temporal purposes is not going to exist forever. You understand that? But look what it says. Now the body is not for fornication. And there, there's a whole lot more that we could spend on this passage of scripture. The body is not for fornication, but it's for the Lord and the Lord for the body. Now, what I want you to know is this, is that uh, there's no sin that's good for your body. He, he goes on to say this in this passage of scripture. He's talking about fornication, but we do need to understand something here. The fornication he's talking about is different than the for, a little bit different than the fornication that you and I may have it, engaged in. Now, it's different, but it's not exactly different. What are you talking about? All right, let me, I'm glad you asked. In the city of Corinth, there were, there were two ports where the sailors would come into the city. And there was a temple. There was a temple to false gods in this city. And in that temple, there were temple prostitutes. You understand? And the way that they worshiped the pagan gods was that these people would go in and they would engage in temple prostitution. That was the way they were worshiping these false gods and these false deities. So most people, whenever they are having fornication or committing sexual immorality, they do not cognitively know. Some people do know when they're doing that. They know exactly what they're doing. Most of those people are living a life of occultism. But most of us, whenever we were committing fornication, we did not know that aspect of it. But that's what he was saying. When you commit fornication, connect yourself to a harlot in that manner, you're actually engaging in a spiritual worship. Your body is not for that he goes on to say that not all sins have that same effect like this sin because this sin is actually engaging internally where the Holy Spirit is and these demons are actually stealing the worship of God because they're engaging in this type of behavior. Does that make sense? I need you to know that it's a sin to still commit fornication. I just want you to know that. It's a, and every sin 
outside of the body will still affect. And that's what the enemy is trying to do. He's trying to cause stuff from the outside here to begin to affect this right here. The right. enemy wants to steal this spot right here that belongs to God. Right. And he's going to start attacking from the outside to try to make his way into the inside. Now, what I want you to know right now. So, so the body it consists of your members and it consists of your flesh. Or it's the same thing, your flesh and your members. There, there's a lot we can say about that. But for right now, I just want to say this. The word of God tells us in Romans chapter 6. That our members are not to be used as instruments of unrighteousness, right. but that instead our members are to be used as instruments of righteousness. Right. And what the word members means in the Greek language is weapons of warfare. Many of you have already heard me talk about that before. And so what God is saying is, is that you and I are engaged in a battle. You and I are engaged in a war. You and I are engaged in a spiritual warfare. And that now that you know who you are in Christ, now that you've been given new life in Christ, I need you to understand that you are a target for the enemy. If you are truly saved, the enemy can see in the spirit realm that you are a believer and that you are a child of God. And he's going to desire to attack you, frustrate you, and any way that he can do that, that is what he plans to do because he wants to steal this spot right here. He wants to destroy this. He wants to destroy this right here. So he's going to bring things again through the outside. So if we take our members and we utilize them as instruments of warfare, weapons of warfare for unrighteousness, we're giving permission to the enemy to come in and to cause distraction, right? But before it makes it to our spirit, man, I want you to know something. It starts to, it starts to operate in this realm right here. It starts to operate in the soul. Now, you've heard me say this many times, but let me just say it again. The word for soul in the Greek language, if you were going to write it with English words, we'll just write it with English words, is, is this word right here because they don't have a Y. But actually, it's the sound, it would be the, the, the sound of a Y. Okay? And when I know, when, so this is where we get the word psyche. So what I want you to understand is this, is that the soulish part of a man, the soulish part of a man is, is where we get the word psyche. And I'm not teaching psychology. I'm teaching psychology right now because I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the soul. I know I've already talked about this, but listen, this isn't something that you just grab a revelation of the first time you hear about it, right? And so I want you to know that before it ever comes out here and makes it all the way here, it starts to affect this right here. Because this soul right here, this soulish realm is, is, is actually what... Look, look at, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'm going to make this point. I'll probably say it again in my, in my notes. I want you to see the close proximity of the soul to the body. You see that right there? And the body is how you engage the external world. Does that make sense? How do you engage? If you want to read something, what do you do? You use your hands. You pick something up and you read it. If you want to watch something on TV, what do you do? You press a button. You use your eyes and you watch that. If you want to listen to something, you press a button and you listen and you bring it in. So your external world, you're, 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 you're engaging in your external world with your body parts, with your members. Does that make sense what I'm trying to say? Yeah. All right. Well, look at the close proximity of the external world to your body and how it begins to already touch this soulless realm. But I also want you to know this is that your soul and your spirit are also so closely linked to one another. And I need you to understand this, and I don't want to get ahead of myself, but your soul will drive. Your soul can drive. Your soul is not supposed to drive your human body, but because the spirit of God Amen. is supposed to be driving your human yes. body, but your soul can drive drive your human body if you allow it to. And I'm going to tell you something else. Right. Most Christians live in their soul rather than in their spirit. And I'm just going to tell you that right now, okay? And, and, and so, but while we're talking about that, I want, you, I want you to be able to see this. And so the soul is made up of your mind, your will, and your emotions, all right? Now, while I'm on that, and I'm just going to go ahead and write this into the blank right here. So, so if the soul is my mind... Is there, what's another way we can say that? If my soul, me, is my, partly my mind, what does that have to do? 
what I think. Right? Mm -hmm. If part of my mind is what I think. Right? It versus what he thinks. What does he say in his word? My ways are above your ways. My thoughts are above your thoughts. Yeah. But you can think what you desire to think, even though your thinking might have some scripture connected to it, it may not be God's perfect will. Okay, for instance, here we go. I'm getting way ahead of myself, but let's just go ahead and do it while we're on the diagram. The word of God teaches us that God prospers those who walk with him. That God, he, the Lord, the word of God says this, that I pray that you would prosper even as your soul prospers. So what it's telling you right there is that you're, first of all, you need to be worried about your soul. First of all, you need to be worried about your mind and your will and your emotions and that you'd be like your Lord and say, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And that you would seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then all these other things would be added unto you. But it never fails that so many of us, and I know what I'm talking about because I've been there, we get so caught up in the desire to see the prosperous hand of God move in our lives that now this takes the forefront instead of Jesus taking the forefront and this will begin to mess us up. And we're operating in our soul and we're making decisions in our soulish realm based upon what we think God wants. But yet at the same time, we're transgressing the word of God the whole time. We're trying to bring about the blessings of God in our life. So we're not operating in the spirit because the spirit of God is going to go back to the word of God because the spirit of God will never contradict the word of God. And the spirit of God is trying to speak to you and say, no, don't you do it that way. you got to have faith. Hey, you got to have hope. It goes the same thing with the single woman that desires a man, right? The, the word of God says a man that finds a wife finds a good thing. Vice versa. A woman that finds a husband finds a good thing. And then, but if you go outside of the will of God and you do it your way according to your timing and you don't let the word of God speak to you and have its way in you, you can think, oh, oh but the word of God says it's good for me to have a husband. Yeah, but look what you went and you did. Right, right. You got out ahead of God. You have connected yourself to the wrong thing. Doesn't mean that God can't come in and heal it. Doesn't mean that God, as a matter of fact, most of the time, he uses those kinds of things to get us to a place of brokenness, right? You get the point that I'm trying to make? All right. Yes. And then, but, but then look, while we're here, let's go ahead and do it. So it's not, it's not what he thinks when I'm operating in my soul. Now, if, if I allow my spirit to hear hit from his spirit, and his spirit affects my spirit, and my spirit tells my mind, no, sir, it's not what you think. Hallelujah. It's what he thinks. Amen. See, God, want, God wants your brain to work. Yes. I haven't even gotten there yet. God wants your brain to work. God wants you to be a thinker. He just doesn't want your thinking to override his thinking. Come on. Amen. Amen. He wants his spirit to speak to your spirit. That's why you got to know the word of God. Yes. He wants his spirit to speak to your spirit. Amen. So that your spirit will tell your soul. What did David say? Oh, soul, why are you downcast within me? I was thinking about that while we were worshiping. I don't know. You might have thought the presence of God. I was struggling at first. I'm like, oh, no. No, no, no. Listen, I don't know what everybody else is going to do when they come into the house of the Lord. And I don't mean this ugly. I'm just being real with you. I am convinced in my life, Jesus deserves the glory. Yes. Jesus deserves yes. the honor. I'm not trying to fabricate something. I'm not trying to be a cheerleader. I'm just trying to communicate to you. Jesus is worthy of glory and honor. He is worthy to be exalted. He is worthy to be magnified. And as long as I got breath in my lungs, that's what I'm going to do. When I come into the house of the Lord, you just need to understand. I ain't trying to show off. I'm not trying to be loud. I'm not trying to take the glory away from Jesus. I'm telling you, I'm waking up in the morning and I'm saying, with these lips, I will praise you. With this life, I will lay it down before you. I plead with you, Lord. Use this vessel. Release your glory into this fallen earth, oh Lord God, because I believe it, my friend. This thing is real. Jesus is real, and he died, and he's worthy. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy to receive glory in our Yes, he is. Amen. So if, if it's also connected to what I think, it's also connected to what I want. Mm, come on. Come on. 
versus what he wants. Right. <laughs> A while back I was on that kick. I, but I want cookie. <laughs> Whatever that cookie is. I want cookie. But the Lord said, but you can't have that cookie. And but we but and so that's the heart of our Lord. The heart of our Lord is if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, not my will. Your will be done. Let your will be done in my life. Speak to me, Holy Spirit. And when I hear your voice, let my soul not get in the way. So not only is it what I want, but it's also what I feel. Right? You can't let your heart lead you. You can't let your heart. That's a lie from the world. That's good. That's a lie from the world. You can't go off of your emotions. Your emotions will lie to you. But I want this. I feel like this is God's will. I feel like this is the spirit moving in my life. I feel. But does it line up with the word of God? Does it line up with the will of God for your life according to to the word of God, right? And let me just say this. If you allow, we hadn't really gotten there yet, but if you allow this stuff out here to come in through here, and then you can see whenever you, what you're doing is you're processing. Look, I'm not trying to get overly technical, but let's understand. I'm in a physical realm, and I'm. this is how he gave me a physical body because he put me in a physical realm. And I can reach over here with your physical body, and I can pick up physical things, okay? But sometimes the physical things I pick up what, what happens is, is the way that I filter my external world is through my soul because my understanding, my mind that I'm understanding the things that I'm doing, it's, it's being filtered through my soul. Does that make sense? I understand I picked up a Kleenex because I got sweat on my face. <coughs> there, there's, there's a cognition going on. Dog can't do that. Even if it had an opposing thumb, it couldn't. Realize it has sweat on his brow to wipe his brow because it doesn't understand that. Do you, you, you understand what I'm trying to get at? It. I hope I hope I'm not losing you. I hope I'm not getting. But but I need you to understand that that the things that you the things that you have in the in your external world that you're engaging with your physical body when you bring them in they're filtering through. Listen, many human beings live without their spirit. They're, they're not even living in the spirit. Their spirit is dead because they're dead to God. All right. So with all that said, and you can see that, let's go ahead and go to, to uh, John chapter 4. And we'll go to John chapter 4, verse 21. And uh, we'll read verses 20, 21 through 23. Jesus said unto her, woman, believe me, the hour comes when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem Worship the Father. Now, there's a whole lot of context there. The mountain that he's talking about is Gerizim. Gerizim is in a place, this city's called Sychar, which is near Shechem, where Jacob built a well, dug a well, and Shechem is in Samaria. There's so much context to this. Gerizim is, is the, the mountain from where the blessings were spoken. Ebal, the mountain on the other side of the valley, is where the curses were spoken. The Samaritans... I can't even get into it. I just want you to know there's a whole lot of context. And she's questioning the rabbi. She's like, yeah, but something's not right, rabbi. I perceive you're a prophet, but something's not right. You say that we say we worship on this mountain. You say you worship in Jerusalem. Jesus said, yeah, there's a right mountain in Jerusalem to worship. And that's what it is. It's called Mount Zion because that's where the temple is located. And that's where that's where the presence of the Lord is located. Amen. He says salvation is of the Jews. But you get the point. She says, she says, neither, he says, neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship, you know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour comes, and now is, because Jesus is here now, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeks such to worship him. I counted it earlier. I think it was five times in, ver in three verses. The word worship was used. Right. One time the word worshiper. That's a big deal. And he's saying this. He's saying that whenever you're going to worship God, 
The Father's will is that this is where worship takes place. You understand that? I think this is important for us to understand this. So, so worship is definitely not a song service. That's right. Amen. Okay, worship is not a song service. Worship is a life. That's right. Where my spirit is connected to his spirit and I'm yielding to the spirit of God. But let's just pretend for a second. Well, we're not, we won't pretend. Reality is we can come into a song service and we can worship the Lord. Amen. We can allow our spirit to connect to his spirit. That's why that's why I got all riled up a little while ago and trying to like make a point because I want you all to understand what my heart is. I don't want you to be confused and think I just want everybody to come to the front so that it looks good for everybody. You come to the front. If, you know why you come to the front if you're going to come to the front? Can I tell you why? Is it okay if I say it? Because he's worthy. Because he's worthy for you to come to the front. He's worthy for you to fall upon your knees. He's worthy for you to tell him how much you love him. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Because he laid his life down. Amen. Praise God. And when we come into the house of the Lord, that's what he desires for us to do. To worship him from our spirit. To grab. So, so listen, if a song service is worship, I promise you it's not because you want the sound to be a certain way. Come on. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. Now, listen, I love I love skill. There's a difference, though, between skill and worship. Amen. You know, Naya made the point that in the little place where she grew up. As a little girl on those uh, that David Wilkerson, fought, they didn't have musical instruments half the time. And she, she said, if, if we begin to worship the Lord from our heart, we ought to be able to sing, Jesus loves me, this I know. Yeah. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible Jesus. tells me so. Amen. Yeah, I, I sent out on group text, I don't know if y'all listened to that song about Rock of Ages. Because I planned on using it in my message Wednesday night and I never got to it. Rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. He's talking about Moses. I'm going to hide you in the cleft of the rock. But there's a place in Christ where he would hide us in the cleft of He said, from thy riven side did flow a split. Oh, I'm not even going to tell you this. Tell you, tell you the revelation of it because I'm talking about the split, the ribbon side on Wednesday night. From thy ribbon side did flow water and blood, the double cure. Yes. Over, over what? For forgiveness of sin and its power. Huh? How's it going? For, for, it's talking about forgiveness and power. Over the power of sin. Sin has no power because of his ribbon side, because the blood that flowed through there. He broke the power of sin when he died on the cross. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you right now. Jesus is victorious. He's a victorious warrior. And if you'll trust him and believe him, he'll move in your life. And he'll change your life. He'll set you in your hind feet. And he'll give you hind feet. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's look at this right here. Let's talk a little bit more about the Spirit. Jesus said that he that is, if you're going to worship him, you've got to worship him from your spirit. Amen. He wants your spirit to connect to his spirit. He wants you and I to learn how to become spiritual. Not soulish. Not, not sukikos, but pneumaticos. Amen? All right. So we'll talk about that maybe. But look, John chapter 17, verses 19 through 22. I want you to see this passage of Scripture. We've used this recently, but let's use it again. <clears throat> Jesus says this. He's praying to the Father. This is actually the, the Lord's Prayer right here, my friend. That's right. This is the Lord's Prayer because he's praying to the Father before he goes to the cross. Uh -huh. He says, for their sakes. He's talking about his disciples. I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Wow. Do you, okay, listen, this is so deep. That's, pro, that's really the reason that I struggle so much with time because I sit, we, we have so much deep stuff that we need to talk about. But listen, y'all know what the word sanctify means. We already talked about this recently. What does the word sanctify mean? Somebody help me. Set apart. Set apart. Made holy. Made holy. So the word sanctified means to be set apart and made holy. Let me ask you a question. Set apart from what would you say as a Christian? The world. The world. The world. Praise God. Huh? In another word? What's in the world? 
The world, the flesh, and the devil. World, the flesh, and the devil. What else? Sin. Sin is in the world. So, so to be sanctified means to be set apart from the world, but also to be set apart from sin and to be made holy. So let me ask you a question. Look back at the text. He says, go back, go back to the pre... Yeah, no, he's, no, I'm sorry, right here. For their sakes, I sanctify myself. Well, what are you trying to say, Jesus? You were in the world. You were, you were of the world. Why do you need to be separated, Jesus? Hmm. Are you were of the world? No, Jesus wasn't of the world. <laughs> and so he says, and, and so, oh, so you needed to be made holy, Jesus? Ah, oh. the dissenting mind. Well, I wish I had time to really just talk to y'all about all that stuff that happened last week about that dude walking down the street, but we don't have time. So are you trying to say that Jesus is not saying, no, of course Jesus was sanctified. So that's not what he's talking about. Jesus was already separated. Jesus was born of incorruptible flesh, incorruptible seed. Jesus was born of the virgin. He had no sin. He was altogether different. He was not of the world. He was in the world just like you and I are. But what is he saying? The sanctified. What do you think he's talking about there? Cross. He's talking about the cross. What, what does he mean by that? He's going to go to the cross. He's going to die, right? That's right. He's going he's to resurrect from the dead. And like Robert said, he's going to be taken up where he ever liveth to make intercession for you. But listen, in addition to that, where he ever liveth in the realm of the truth of what he accomplished, which was the Father's will before the foundation of the earth, you were not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver or gold, but by the precious blood of a lamb that was foreordained before the foundation of the earth. And so now that we finally get to the part where Jesus is here on the earth and he says, now my time has come. I must separate, sanctify myself so that they might be sanctified through your truth so that Jesus now goes to the cross, pays the penalty of sin, is buried and resurrects because the wages of sin is death, but he had no sin. So therefore death could not hold him down. Amen. And now the very spirit that raised him from the dead also will give life to your mortal body. Amen. And he will resurrect you and he will now separate you from the world. He will separate Amen. you from sin. And now you being in him and clothed in his righteousness are made made holy because of now the father looks at you he sees Jesus instead of your faults and your failures but there's still a process that we must go through where we learn these things to be true amen all right praise God so he says I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth and he says this neither pray I for these alone I'm not just praying for Peter and John and Andrew and I'm not just praying for Bartholomew no 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 I'm not praying just for them alone but for them also which will believe on me through their word Hallelujah. He's talking about you. Because through the ages, the word of truth has gone into the lives of people, transformed their lives, and then those people have taken that truth and they have released it into the world they live in, and more seed yeah. has reproduced after its own kind. Amen. And that is your purpose on earth. As you have received the same seed that has produced the life of God on the inside of you, you also are to release the seed of God's word to reproduce after your own kind, which is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And what he's come to do for the world. All right. So let's keep going. That they all may be one. As you, Father, are in me, I in you, they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that you have sent me and the glory which you gave me, I have given them. And they may be one even as we are one. Oh, my God. So good. I, I'm not trying to get messy right here, but let's look at this. That they may be one in us. That the world may believe that you have sent me. Amen. That they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. The Father is holy. Jesus is holy. Jesus is in the Father. The Father's in Jesus. Amen. And he said this. He said that they may also be in us so that the whole world will know that you sent me. So how is the world going to know that he sent us if we're not letting God dwell in us and change us? Now, listen, let's understand this. There's a time where it takes time. It takes time for God's truth to transform us. Right. So let's let's not get frustrated and, and, and don't hear what I'm not saying. But let's understand that God's plan for your life is that 
you would be made one with him here and that this right here is going to start flowing out and it's going to start affecting the soul, the mind, and the emotions. Yeah. And the next thing you know, it's going to start affecting this right here. And these members are going to start doing the things of God instead of the things of the world. Well, I hope yeah, that makes a little bit of sense right there. All right, here we go. <clears throat> this is the verse we use Wednesday night. Romans 7, verse 23. <coughs> but. <clears throat> there's always a but. Yeah. Right? There's therefores and there's buts. But. There's a war raging. Oh, hallelujah. There's a war raging. There's a war raging in the soul. And there's a war raging in Romans chapter 7, verse 23. Look what he says. But I see another law in my members, and it's warring against the law of my mind, and it's bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. That word captivity right there, if you dig in deep enough, it's a prisoner of war. I'm here to tell you that there is a law that's taking place. And there's a war that's taking place. And the war is between my mind and it's trying to bring me into captivity to the law of sin, which wants to operate through my members. See, whenever you yield to the truth of God's word in your mind, you begin to believe God's word in your soulish man. And you begin to trust in God's word because the spirit of God on the inside of you is saying, whatever they're telling you ain't true, that's not going to keep you happy. That's a lie. That's temporary. That's a temporary circumstance that's trying to steal the glory of God out of here, trying to mess your spirit man up. No, the war is raging in your mind. The enemy is coming against you and he's trying to grab a hold of your mind to get you to believe a lie instead of to believe the truth. Right. So the enemy wants to attack your soul man to try to prevent your spirit man yes. from being able to say, no, 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 no. That's a lie. Come on, church. We got to get to the point where we're like, no, I need, I'm catching. You know what the Apostle Paul said? He said, we're not ignorant of his devices. Oh, that's the kind of Christian I want to be. Come on. Amen. The Holy Spirit, you got an option on the inside of you, 1 yes, John chapter yes. 2, verse 20. You got an option. That means anointing. You got the charisma, the oil. You got the oil on the inside of you, the Holy Ghost. You have an option on the inside of you, and you know all truth. If you're born again, the Holy Spirit living right here. And when the enemy tries to come in and affect this mind, the Holy Spirit's saying that ain't true. And you know that ain't true, right? Even before you know the word of God. But listen, I knew it was sin to... I knew it was a sin to go to that bar room and to try to talk to that girl. One, two, three weeks after I got saved, I was on a boat for two of them weeks, got off the boat, and ended up back in there, which I should not have done. But I knew it when I went to walk towards it that it was wrong. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of being disobedient. Right. I'm tired of being disobedient. God's people been disobedient against him. Uh, you read the scripture. What about the people that are obedient? Don't you think? I just think sometimes... When you look at people's lives, I'm not saying they've never failed. But sometimes when you see what God has done in their lives, it's like, man, I think sometimes, I bet you that brother right there, I bet you he passed the test like Joseph. You know what I'm saying? But hallelujah, he'll still rise up David. Praise God. He'll still rise up David. But sometimes I'll look at certain things and I'm like, I want to go to being a Joseph, Lord. By your grace, by your mercy, by your strength, by your power, I want to be a Joseph. I want to start saying no to the lies of the devil. I want to start saying yes to the Holy Ghost on the inside of me. I want to say yes to the Word of God. I want the Word of God to rise up on the inside of me because I want Him to use me, church, because I'm here to tell you, I want Him to use you. I pray for you more than I pray for myself half the time because I'm telling you right now, we are going to stand before the Lord. We are going to stand before the Lord and we are going to give an account of how we handled this temporary life that he gave us. And listen, you're not all called to be a pastor. Be glad for that. You're not all called to be a preacher, okay? But you are called to live for God, and you are called to let him in your spirit affect your external That's world, right. and that you would live for him, and that you would bring glory for him. Amen? Yes, Amen. Amen. yes Lord. Praise God. Amen. So he, the enemy wants to come from the outside. He wants to affect... That soulish. Look at Colossians chapter 2. Could you go, Haley, could you put the ESV up there for me? 
Colossians chapter 2, verses 8 and 10. But look, let me tell you this. In the King James Version, I chose the ESV for a purpose because it was the best translation, in my opinion, out of all of them. If you go to the King James Version, where it says spirits of the world in verse 8 right here, it actually says rudiments. Okay? But the idea, if you dig deep enough, is that it's the spiritual entities that have been teaching mankind through the ages before Jesus showed up on how to go against God. Human philosophy, human wisdom, human intellect, and that spirit is still alive today right. and is trying to affect the minds of God's people. So he says this, he says, see to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, not according to Christ. For in him, the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily and you have been filled in him who is the head of all rule and authority. So I want you to understand, let's look at this, spirits. Y'all think Mark Zuckerberg was led by the Holy Spirit? I'm just asking a question. I'm not trying to pick on Mark Zuckerberg. I'm just asking a question. Who's Mark Zuckerberg? He's the guy that developed Facebook, right? Am I right on that? Do y'all believe that he was led by the Holy Spirit to do that? No. <clears throat> do y'all do, do believe? Okay, let's just not keep picking on people, but let's just ask a question. So let's just do this. Social media. Oh, here he goes again. <clears throat> yeah, you got it. You got it. Okay, do you believe? Okay, I'm going to make it easy. Do you believe that Ozzy Osbourne was led by the Holy Spirit to write those first three albums for Black Sabbath. Absolutely. He, he claims that they, that they wrote themselves. I, the, out of Ozzy's mouth. Now, I know it's kind of hard to believe what Ozzy says, and you can't even understand what he says half the time. But, but he says the first three albums of Black Sabbath wrote themselves. Do you believe that, do you believe that the, word, the song Stairway to Heaven written in Jimmy Page's house, a house that was bought, that was previously owned by Aleister Crowley, <laughs> Jimmy Page, a self-professed Satanist. Do you believe it was the Holy Spirit? No. And they claimed it came through automatic writing that picked the pen up and wrote the song? Okay, no, okay. So, so we're gonna use, we'll just, we'll, when we say music, if y'all just wanna think about that music, then we'll use that music, okay? Music. Okay. Do you believe, uh, I don't know, let's not get into details, but let's just go ahead and call it like it is. When TV first started, do y'all ain't old enough to remember this. Lucy and Ricky slept in two different beds. <laughs> Did y'all know that? Who's Lucy and Ricky? The Lucille Ball Show. Lucy and Lucille Ball, married to Ricky, they slept in two different beds. And now we've, we've come all this way to where we got people that, ain't, that are born women that turned into men, and you don't even know which, who's kissing who and who's sleeping with who. I'm not going to get into all that. I'm going to ask you a question. Do you believe that? Do you believe that Hollywood is led by the Spirit of God? Yeah. I'm trying to make a point for you. Do you believe that the trials in your workplace that try to steal your joy are coming from the Holy Spirit? Do you believe that the people around you that are trying to destroy you? Are being led by the Holy Spirit. There's some other things we could put up there. I can't think right now off the top of my head. But I'm just asking a question. Do you believe that these things. are? No these are outside situations. That the enemy. Is trying. To infiltrate. Into. And to make it to this part here. He's trying to infiltrate. Into your soulish man. To cause frustration. And to pull you off. From the things of God. The scripture talks about the fiery darts of the enemy. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16. You can go to that scripture if you don't mind. Ephesians 6 and 16 says this. Above all, take the shield of faith wherewith you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. The enemy's over there like a master bowman. 
He's just throwing fiery darts. He's throwing darts of lust. He's throwing darts of lies. He's throwing darts right. that, like, listen, the only reason I even fuss about the music industry, I know y'all get, I don't know, maybe you're not tired of it. Maybe you're starting to really like it. I don't know where you are. But the only reason I talk about these things is because as we're singing these songs, we're actually agreeing with the song. You know? Uh, you know, like, I don't know. I mean, even if you got a little bit nicer about it, you know, I always quote those ACDC songs and all that stuff. Most of y'all probably don't even know for that. But, you know, what was her name? Um, I don't know that girl. She can sing. I hear that song when I go to the gym. <coughs> Find somebody like you. What was her name? Adele. Adele. She had a voice, man. Find somebody like you. Here she is. She, she had a relationship with somebody in the past. Now she's married. Okay. Now she's married, and she's still hoping that she'd be able to find somebody like you. She's still interconnected to this situation that's outside of God's will. I know y'all know what I'm talking about, because everybody's had a relationship before they got married that they were interconnected to, and we still think, and you don't even remember how, how much you used to fight with that person. You don't even remember how miserable you used to be. In, in reality, though, is that because in Christ, there's a whole new world to live, a whole new life to live, a whole new re renewed mind to begin to think like Jesus. Because I, what I was going to preach this morning was about marriage, but I was going to bring you to Romans chapter 7, and I was going to talk to you about it, and I'm sure we'll preach it at some point in time, but that Jesus laid his life down for the church. Amen? All right. So the shield of faith. So when the fiery darts of the enemy are coming at you from the outside trying to attack you, it's like as a, as a Christian warrior, it's like, that's a lie, that's a lie, that's a lie, that's a lie, that's a lie. Hollywood's lying to me. Hollywood's lying to me. The music industry is lying to me. The people at work are lying to me. They're, trying to, they're lying on me and they're lying to me because they're trying to beat me down, right? My old friend's lying about me. Uh, my, my family lying about me. Any way that the enemy can come in, that's why the Apostle Paul told you, you're not in a wrestling match against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against world rulers, against spiritual wickedness and heavenly plagues. When are we going to believe that? When are we going to start to believe the word of God? I talk to people in the clinic sometimes, and I just go right out, dude. Within five minutes, I'm at the aliens. <laughs> fallen, if aliens come knocking on your door, it's fallen angels, buddy. And let me tell you something. You better get your heart right. Because I'll, I'll agree with me, the world is shifting. And we're up here like getting ready to topple over. The whole world is spinning out of control. And every last one of them I talk to, they're like, man, you're right. You're right, but they don't know what to do with me because guess what? I got one moment with them and I believe in that when I'm done, the Lord will protect the seeds that need to be protected. He'll remove the ones that don't need to be there right now and he'll water the ones that were there before. Amen. Praise Amen. God. It's on him. It's on him. Amen. Time is short, my friends. Yes. We got to get our heart right. Yes. We don't want to be drunk. We don't want to be, we want to be sober. Be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, rolls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Stay steadfast in the faith. Be watchful. Those that get drunk, get drunk in the night. Those that sleep, sleep in the night. But we're not of the night, we're of the day. We're of the light. Don't fall asleep on your watch. Oh, Lord. As a watchman, keep me on the wall. It don't matter what people want to hear. It don't matter what people like to hear. I'm going to stand before God one day and give an account. Lord, help me. Help me. I'm going to stand before God and give an account for the things that I told you, for the things that people listen to. Lord, help the preachers. Lord, help the evangelists. Lord, help them. Because it, they're going to stand before Maybe they're doing it right. I'm not saying that they're not. But Lord, please, if they're deceived, help them. Because it's not going to be good. It, it, if they did it wrong, it's not going to be good. Lord, if I did it wrong, it's not. I don't want to. I want you to be right. pleased with what I've done, and I mean that. I'm not just trying to get emotional on you. I'm trying to tell you I mean it with everything that's in me. If I didn't, I would stop. I would just stop because I don't think I can preach like some people. I don't think I can. 
I don't, first of all, I don't think I'm that gifted. Number two, I don't even know how to do that. I don't know how to, and the only way I know how to do it is, is what I, is what I see God. just to say it. Thank Lord, you. help us. Let's talk a little bit more about some of this. We still got a little bit of time. First Corinthians chapter two, verse nine. First Corinthians chapter two, verse nine. We're going to talk a little bit about the soul, the spirit, the body. Starting in verse nine. Look at this, man. Look at this. This is so good right here. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Can you imagine that? Do you, do, you, do you see that right there? Is that not the most beautiful thing that you've ever thought of before? I don't know about you. I'm just trying to make sure I didn't miss a spot in my notes. But that's okay. Let's just keep it going. Because I want to tell you something, man. I had a vision. And I've already shared that vision with y'all. I've got to say it again to, to this morning. Because I believe the Lord wants me to learn what to even do with these things he shows me. I don't even know what to do with some of these things he showed me. So I need to learn how to, what to do with them. Okay? I hasn't seen. Do you believe that this morning? Do, do you know what that means? It means when you breathe your last breath here and you open right. your spiritual eyes there, when you step yeah. over to the other side, you don't have a clue. Nope. I don't have a clue. The things, I mean, we might have a clue of some things of that he's prepared for those that love him. This life is temporary. This is a dress rehearsal. That's what Leonard Ravenhill said. This is a dress rehearsal for eternity. Do you believe that? Yes. I believe that with everything that's in me. And that's how I'm going to preach. I'm not going to preach your best life now. Because it's not always going to be your best life now. But I promise you this. If you'll live for the Lord, he will bless you. He will bless this life. He will bless you. Amen. I believe that. All right. So it says this. But God has revealed them unto us. Where? By his spirit. He wants to reveal some stuff. For the spirit searches all things. Yes. The deep things of God. Now, what man knows the things of a man, save the spirit of the man, right? So some of you in this place, you would say, well, I know Pastor Matt pretty good, right? Some of you, I think you, know, you, would, you could say that. Some of the good, some of the bad, right? Uh, but do you really know me like I know myself? Do you really know me like the Lord knows me? No, you don't. And it's vice versa, right? So what... Who knows a man other than the spirit of that man? Okay. Even so, the things of God knows no man but the spirit of God. Now, this is so beautiful right here. Believe this. But now we have received not the spirit of the world. I, I don't mean to keep interrupting here, but we're not supposed to be receiving the spirit of the world. But... If we're over here receiving Mark Zuckerberg, Ozzy Osbourne, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Lord help you. Yellowstone is popular. Uh, receiving the lies of the people that speak to me here, okay? Then we are receiving the spirit of the world. Correct. Because that is coming from the spirit of the world. The spirits of the world. The elemental spirits of the world that are infiltrating your person. We have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but with which the Holy Ghost teaches. Oh, Praise yeah. God. Yeah. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Believe this right here. But the natural man receives not the things of the spirit of God. Yes. For they are foolishness unto him. Right. Now look, I don't. I got this kind of wrong the other day. But I want you to know this. This word. Natural. I'm going to just go ahead and put the Y on there. Psychikos. It means he's a soulish man. The natural man is a soulish man. Right. He's thinking with his soul, his mind, his will, <clears throat> and his emotions. 
The natural man cannot receive the things of God because see, if he's not awakened spiritually, but even you, if you've been awakened spiritually, you can still operate from your soulish man. I'm warning you of that. Why, why would you warn me of that, preacher? Because I've done it before. I've, I've ventured to tell you that much of my Christianity was lived from my soul. Mm. Now, I, I, in my mind, I felt like I was right. In my mind, I was doing things that I thought were according to the, to the word of God. But I'm telling you right now, much of my Christian walk, I believe, was in my soul. I don't care what, I mean, I care what you think about me. That's not what I'm saying. I'm, why, why would you say that about yourself? People are going to think less of you. If that's how you choose to do it, that's up to you. But I'm trying to help people. Right, right. Be, I'm just trying to make you aware. Be careful that you're not operating based upon what you think. Because sometimes what you think is wrong. That's right. Sometimes your opinions are wrong. Sometimes they're right because they're based upon the spirit and they're based upon the word. But you can have a mixture of two things. You can have a mindset about something and it be partially from the spirit and partially from your soul. Because of your opinions. All right. Can I just say this real quick? I, want, I think this is, I love this right here. You may not like it, but, and I can't probably do it as good as Solomon. But you remember Solomon talking about that quantum mechanics? Wasn't that cool? Yeah. The, 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 the probability, man. It's like when they put that little light through that thing, whatever, poop, 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 and then you put a human intervention in it, mm -hmm. only one possibility. Took away all the possibilities that God could have, that God, and then just this one. All right, so I was thinking about this, man, because I'm trying to give you an understanding, a little bit of the soulish man right all right, because the natural mind cannot perceive the things of God. Okay, but but look, what I want you to see is there's a big difference between the brain and the mind. I want you to just bear with me. I know we're getting deep here, but there's a big difference between the brain and the mind. Somebody help me. What are you talking about? Well, what is the brain? The brain is an organ in your body. You ever heard of something called ATP? I was looking at this the other day. You might not have adenosine triphosphate. How does it go? Tri adenosine triphosphate. So ATP is actually energy produced for the body. It takes place inside this little spot on the inside of a cell, and the little spot's called a mitochondria. And the mitochondria is this place where energy for your body is produced. That is a lot I'm saying. Like, I study this stuff and I'm like, wow. Look at the, how do you, listen, I, I wish I had the diagram to put up there, but you're cleaving off pyruvates and citrates and doing all this chemical reaction that's taking place based upon various things that are happening. And you got mitochondria in your brain and you got mitochondria in your body, right? And, 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 and you're at the cellular level in every cell, not every cell, but in almost every cell of your body has mitochondria and it's producing ATP. And it's kind of like a little tiny combustible engine that's giving little explosions. And so at the brain level to the body, because listen to me, you can have a genius that can sit here and rattle off ATP to you, mitochondria to you. He could go in, he could walk in, put on my, uh, oh man, I forgot the name of that. I walked into this particular doctor doing a heart surgery and he had a song playing. It was his favorite title. My brown eyed girl, who is that? Who sings that? Van Marsden. Who? Probably Van Marsden. Yes, he had that thing. That was his thing. And he's like, I walk in, put my gloves on. Let me go ahead, go ahead and saw that chest bone for me. Go ahead and crank it open. All right, let me go to work. He's got all these little veins coming up onto these coronary arteries. It's like a skilled seamstress. So and all that stuff. But look, you can have all that brain looking. That's not even the smartest guy in the, in the, on the team. You gotta talk, start talking to these neurologists and these neurosurgeons. And I'm telling you right now, they got ATPs firing all over the place, right? Their mitochondria is like producing all this energy. Like the thought, listen, in your body is so amazing. The thought that I'm about to, I'm about, okay, I'm going to walk to that door and open the door. Now, y'all that have been in this church a long time. I'm going to open the door means a lot more than, than just opening the door. But in order, you don't think about any of this stuff, but this is what's happening in your body. 
Body, you need to go open that door. It's kind of high. You ain't thinking about none of this, but all of a sudden, a chemical is released. There's an action potential that's, that's created, and a little bit of an explosion happens, and then it releases a chemical, and it goes through something called a synapse, which is like a long neuron, and then boom, 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 explosions happen, and then it sends a signal to your sensory body, and your body starts moving towards the door, and all these ATPs are being produced in your skeletal system, and you walk up to the door, and you open the door. But what I'm trying to tell you is this, is that your mind is functioning at a higher level than your brain. Because your mind is your consciousness of your soul. That you have a purpose to open that door. There's a purpose that you're opening that door for. Yeah. It might be something simple because it's hot in the room and we're going to let some fresh air in. But you might be opening that door to see what's on the other side. You understand? Whatever's on the other side, it might be something good on the other side. It might be the blessings of God. And you're walking over there to open that door. But here's this genius. And he's like, yep, I know what's on the other side. And he's like just barreling through. Oh, there, there, there he, there's, there's my new Mercedes AMG. And look, you know how many, I'm just being real, how many women I'm going to pick up in that car. How many, oh, I, 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 you know what? I'm, I'm like a god in a white coat. I'm, I'm picking on Doc. I'm just, right now, I'm just picking on doctors. Right? It's not just doctors, it's anything like that. But, but I'm about to, that's what I'm going to do. And in his mind, he's functioning at a higher level. But if you try to talk to him about God, he's going to say, can you even name the 12 disciples? Give me a break. <laughs> and, 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 and he has no, no understanding of the things of God because his spirit is dead. His sukikas, his natural mind, cannot even perceive the things of God. He does not understand that he is shifting into fifth gear, if AMGs have a fifth gear. He's shifting into fifth gear, and he is, as he blares his ACDC on the radio, he is on a highway to hell. And his friends might be there, but it ain't going to be a party like anything. But he is completely void of the consciousness of God because the natural mind cannot perceive the things of God. Lord help us. It's God's will that his spirit, right here, will commune with our spirit and that the spirit of God will begin to speak to the soulish man. That his spirit will speak, and the Holy Spirit is going to speak to your spirit, right? The Holy Spirit wants to speak to your spirit. He wants to say, son, you know better than that. You and I have already had this discussion You've already read it in my word. My spirit has already confirmed it to you. You know what the word of God says. And here you are. Like, and so the spirit is speaking to my spirit. And the Holy Spirit's will is that my spirit would speak to my soul. And that my soul would tell my body to do the will of God. Does that make sense? I know that that's like a lot of steps along the way, but I want you to understand the battle is in your mind. The enemy is trying to attack you at the level of your mind. He wants to get in any way that he can. And he's going to send forces from the outside. And you and I have the spirit of God on the inside of us. Okay. And we're supposed to know. Let's look at verse 15. Same, same uh, chapter. 1 Corinthians 3, <clears throat> verse 15. So the natural mind can't perceive the things of God. But look what it says. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Spiritual. If you were going to write that in Greek, you would write it like this. Pneumatikos. Pneuma, spirit, breath, wind, spirit of God. God breathed his life into Adam. Pneumatics, air-driven machinery, pneumonia, infection in the lungs where air, pneumo, it's not important what that means, but you get it, pneuma. So the person that is spiritual the spirit is speaking to his spirit and he's being led by the spirit. He's yielding 
to the Holy Spirit. And he's allowing the Holy Spirit to lead him and guide him. And sometimes it's going to lead him and guide him against his own will. Mm. <clears throat> but Lord, not my will, your will be done. And there's a battle that's raging. And the Lord wants us to yield to the Spirit and to be led by the Spirit. That that listen, that brings <clears throat> to be led by the Spirit to a whole nother level, my friend. We'll talk about that maybe Wednesday because that was what we were supposed to get. All right. So I want to transition a little bit. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 23. We're almost done. Proverbs 23, verses 6 through 7. One of the things is that I've often thought about the heart because if you look up the word heart in the original languages, it has the word soul connected to the word heart. Okay? So the heart is part of the soul also. So the soul is the soul. The soul is the mind, the will, and the emotion. But when we look at the word heart... If you look at the definition of it, because I, I pulled it up on my little uh, dictionary in the Greek, and the words feelings and thoughts are connected to it. Okay, feelings and thoughts. So the heart is that part that both thinks and feels. So if we're operating in our soulish man, depending upon what's in our heart, is going to affect the way we act the way we think, the way we react. Does that make sense what I'm trying to say? All right, here we go. So look at Proverbs 23, verse 6 through 7. So he's trying to warn you in this passage not to eat dinner with the wrong kind of person or not to, not to be impressed if he has some real good stuff. So if, the, if old neurology guy comes to pick you up in his Mercedes AMG, you need to be careful that you don't allow his nice car, his nice house, and the big expense account when he take wines and dines you or dines you not to not to be like oh wow this is so impressive <laughs> wow man this dude's got it going on okay yeah well you might as well put a knife to your throat another mm -hmm. proverb says you just didn't put a knife to your throat because you just bought into this lie right here all right so look at so he's telling you be careful who you eat with but that's not even a part I want you to see I want you to see we'll read it first though I want you to see verse seven eat thou not the bread of him that has an evil eye. <coughs> Neither desire his dainty meats. <laughs> okay, now go to verse 7. This is the part I want you to see. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, says he to you, but his heart is not with you. Have you ever seen people like that before? Like they are, oh man, dude, you're, that, you are so awesome. Oh, this is so great. This is just, oh man, so good. You know, yeah. And there'll be friend, and, and and in your spirit, that discerning spirit is like, mm, something's not right about this. Because this old boy's going on a little bit too much. I don't really think it was that good, right? And you and you gotta kind of question that kind of stuff, right? Because Jesus even said it, he knew what was in the heart of man. He did not give himself over to them, for he knew what was in the heart of man. But what I wanted you to see here is this: as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So what do we think in our heart? See, that's part of the soulish man. See, and, and that's part of our minds and that's our thinking process. I've got to tell you right now that if we're being inundated in our mind or in our heart, because the heart is connected both to the mind, but also to the emotions. And if we're being led by our soul or by the flesh, then what will happen is, is that our mind will get the best of us. And the next thing you know, it will start to affect our emotions and we'll be very erratic. Have you ever seen erratic people and the behavior and the decisions that they're making? And it really doesn't make any sense because they become very, and I mean, emotions are not always bad. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not trying to say that. Emotions are good. There's, no, there's nothing wrong with being excited for Jesus and whatnot, but we got to understand the difference between the spirit and the soul, right? And at the same time, if we, if we engage in some of these behaviors, or if we're not aware of this. So as he thinks is in his heart, so is he. Look at Matthew chapter 12, verse 34 through 35. This is Jesus talking, and he's talking to the Pharisees. And this is the chapter where they accused him of casting out devils by Beelzebub. And this is what Jesus says to the religious leaders. I never heard, I mean, I might be wrong. I'm just shooting from the hip here. I never heard Jesus call a sinner this. I never want that I can remember heard Jesus call a sinner a viper. But he called it to the religious people. Yeah. Dude, that's something, right? Do you... 
You know, somebody approached me one time and said, I said to them, I said, a wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. I don't know about you, but I love signs and wonders. Hallelujah. I love healings. I love the gifts of the spirit flowing. But I'm telling you right now that there's a, there's a, there's a danger spot where people will begin to seek after signs and wonders. Yes. They will be driven towards signs and wonders. And I made the comment. I just, all I said was a wicked, because they were talking about signs and wonders. And I said, we got to be aware also that a, that a, Evil and a wicked and adulterous generation will seek after a sign and wonder. They said, well, I'm glad you said that because he was talking to the Pharisees. I said, yes, that's exactly right. Do you think that spirit's not still alive today in the church? Mm -hmm. No, that spirit of religion is still alive in the church. Yes. And we have to be careful yes. that we're not seeking after the sign and the wonder, but that instead we're seeking after the one that produces the signs and the wonders. All right. So he says right here, you generation of vipers. How can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So I wanted you to see that as the heart thinks, what's in the mind part of the soul, right, is, 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 it reveals the heart, okay? But also out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so you can judge yourself based on the way you sound. Based on the way you speak. And that's a good word for Pastor Matt to remember. Because there's times, like even recently, something happened at a restaurant. And even though my motives weren't wrong, when I stopped and thought about it, I was like, you know what? That person's right. Like, why, why is he so defensive? Why, why whenever something is said that you disagree with, that you get so irritated so fast? You know, maybe you even feel like you got a good reason to get irritated, but why? Something's not right with that. The Holy Spirit, and, and what I realize is this, is that I might, I might feel like I have a right to be irritated, but I'm pretty sure, I don't know, yeah, Jesus did, he got irritated one time for sure whenever he started flipping them tables. You're not going to tell me that he did Flipping them tables, and I don't, I don't remember. I read the, the scripture. I don't remember that he ever hit anybody with that whip, but he drove them out with the whip. And, and, and I do know that he was angry. He had a righteous anger. Mm -hmm. And sometimes our, our situations can be built on a righteous anger, but sometimes it's just like our, it's in our mind and it's in our heart, and we're defensive. And the Holy Spirit has, has been dealing with my heart about that. Amen. So I don't know what your thing is, but look, he goes on to say this, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil things. So, so you can judge yourself to some extent on the emotions that come out of you, on the, the way you talk, the things you talk about, the way you respond to people, right? This is good stuff right here, my friend. How do you respond when you find yourself in a situation that kind of twists your arm a little bit? You know, how do you respond whenever people, you feel like people are treating you improperly? What, what is it that rises up on the inside of you in the way, it, or on the inside of me, right? I'm just trying to make a point. All right, so look, we're about to close right here. Matter of fact, the singers and musicians, y'all can come up. Because the body is close to the soul and the soul is close to the body, Okay, the, the external problems of the fallen world, which is affected by our senses. You know, I never really got into this, but you do know that you engage the world through your senses, right? Mm -hmm. Through your body, your members. You know, I always talk about this a lot, like about Abraham and Lot. And you remember how Lot made that decision? Sometimes, some of, you, some of us as Christians, we make decisions based on what we see, hear, taste, and smell. The Bible says that God had given Abraham a promise and whenever it was time for him to split off from Lot, Abraham said, you choose what you want and then I'll make a choice after. Abraham had received a promise from God. You know what the Bible says? Lot looked at the plain of Jordan and he saw it was well watered. And you know what? Logically, that makes sense. I got sheep. I need grass. Water helps grass grow. And so he made a decision based upon his senses and probably based upon the fact that he wanted to be prosperous. And so he started making decisions 
based upon the possibility of prosperity. But his desire for his prosperity based upon his carnal senses led him to Sodom. And he ended up in the midst of Sodom, in the midst of wickedness. And he was bound by wickedness. And thank God in his mercy that he snatched him out and saved him. And so I want you to know that through our senses, we engage the world around us. Uh, and the world affects our senses through our soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions. And when we bring the world in and it causes a war that filters through our soul and it ultimately desires to penetrate and affect our spirit. I thought about the story with Peter. Peter's external world started to affect him when he was walking on water. He, he started off with his eyes focused on Jesus. Jesus said, come out to me. And, and Peter's focused on Jesus. He's connected to the Lord. And he steps out in faith. And he's walking on water. His eyes are focused on the Lord. And then all of a sudden, he sees the storm around him. He's, he hears, I believe he hears the howling of the wind. He, hear, he hears the swashing of the waves. He sees it with his eyes. He feels the spray of the ocean upon his face. And it starts to affect him. And it starts to affect his senses, start to affect his soul. And, and, and I would imagine in his mind, he, he started to question, how, how can this be? And he started to get concerned. He started to have doubt. He started to have unbelief. And he started to sink. I want to tell you that sometimes you're going to see a storm raging in the spirit all around you. And the enemy is going to try to look for that opportune time to speak and whisper in your ear. And he's going to say, you hear those winds howling? You see those waves crashing? You're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. He's not going to get you through. But I'm here to tell you. <laughs> Even if you take your eyes off of Jesus and you find yourself singing, He's not going to let you get lost. He loves you. He's going to reach down. He's going to grab all of your hands. And even when you sink, he's going to reach down. He's going to pull you up. Amen. Isaiah 26, 3 through 4. Stay. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind has stayed on thee, because he trusts in thee. Let's worship the Lord tonight. Amen. Father, we give you glory.